Hello everyone and welcome to the end of and thank you for joining me as we discuss episode 7 of the A Certain Scientific Railgun T anime series. A very good episode with a lot of character interaction as the plot moves forward slowly but surely. Along with an introduction to a new antagonist. We had this kind of teaser for this antagonist in previous episodes but now she's made her full appearance. It's the none other than the double ganger user wearing purple with the kind of skull like necklace that we see appear today. And honestly, I really enjoyed her first initial appearance. We'll talk about that in just a second. So if you remember, Satan, Uiharu and Shirai all had their memories erased slashed altered of Makoto Mitsuka. Basically, they forgot that they were friends with her. And that left this really cool dynamic to where Makoto has to kind of regain their trust and rejog their memories. And I love seeing the fact that we see in this episode the bridges being recreated between Satan and Misaka and Shirai and Misaka as their bonds are slowly reforming, not as quickly as like, you know, a flash, which is really good. The pacing to how the memories are coming back are really well done. And I like the kind of processes and the factors that are involved as we see things like the phone contact being in Sata's mobile, she obviously wouldn't have someone who isn't her friend in there. So that raises some questions into her mind. And we know that Sata's character has been one to follow rumours and mysteries. So maybe something like memory altercation isn't something out of uh, Sata's beliefs. We also see the fact that Makoto shows an unbelievable amount of trust in Shirai to protect her mother. And this obviously plays a reaction to Shirai's character when she gets the uh, experience of seeing that firsthand. She's obviously thinking, why is this complete stranger having so much faith in me? And that obviously, again, makes Shirai ask questions and kind of plants the seeds of maybe Shirai thinks that something's happened to her. Maybe more is going on in the background than she initially knows. Especially now that the crew have found out that Shokoho is behind Misuka's sister going missing. And it's quite funny actually because the one thing that raises this up is Makoto Misuka, to my knowledge, didn't want her friends to know about the clones or the sisters. And this kind of makes it so they have to find out. I might be wrong on that, they might kind of wreck on it in a few future episodes, but if they find Misaki Shokoho, they're going to know that Misaka has a sister, and of course once their memories come back fully, they're still going to remember these events. So, that's going to raise up more questions in the future from the group. Now I love the fact that because their memories are slowly coming back, and Misaka's friends are slightly coming back onto her side, we're still not 100% fixed in that department just yet. We still have some work to go, so it'd be nice to see how they do this and how they progress moving forward, because I do think that it needs to be addressed and it needs to be situationed out correctly. The group are starting to understand the situation a little bit more, and again, I love Shirai's reaction in her trying to deny her feelings towards Makoto Misuka at the end, blushing red, basically stating, I, I, I don't swing that way, you've totally misunderstood the situation. And of course, we, as viewers, no Shirai very well. Better than she knows herself in this current state. And you just have to put a smile on your face when you read or see that. Or hear that, read it, whatever you do. It, it's just a bit of irony and I like it. So the newish villain in this episode that isn't Shokoho gives off this really creepy vibe in this episode. Which helps make her first appearance really memorable. Now I don't remember her name so I'm just going to refer to her as the uh, purple villain because they may have suggested said it, but at the same time, I'm not 100% certain they have. One of the things about the villains in all of Railgun so far is the fact that they've been a more smart and tactful villain when comparing them to other anime franchises. And this makes me enjoy their involvement a lot more in the series. I like the fact that the Railgun bad guys are a lot more strategic, a lot more tactful, and just smarter in general. Which I think works well. And this character is no different, using her ability to basically create a clone, which doesn't state what she made the clone out of, but they do say some sort of metal-like substance. Now part of me thinks mercury at first, because it's still technically metallic, 
Uh, I could be really wrong on that, but that's what I kind of think initially. But hey, we'll have to learn more as the episodes progress, and I'm excited to find out more. But yeah, she creates another clone. So basically, she has a situation to where she can have two different types of hostages to help to tempt Makoto Musica into talking and giving up information. And even though she technically doesn't get any solid information, she does actually deduce that she did get something out of the conversation. Because Misaka refers to another party. Because she doesn't know anything about what um, this purple head antagonist is uh, talking about, then that obviously raises up the question, who is she talking about? Which then means there's another organisation in the works. Plus the visuals of the clone pointing at the kind of distance, giving that creepy expression, reminded me of something out of a horror movie, and it always symbolises in movies when a character like points really creepily at something, that something big is going to happen. And I can't wait to see if that rings true here. Her voice acting was fantastic, both with the voice changer and without. I really do like the English dub voice for this character, I think it fits her very nicely. And it gives her a little bit more of a playful kind of personality, which I do like as well. Her design looks great overall, and uh, yeah, it just gives off a very nice creepy vibe and makes it feel different from the antagonist we had in Shokuho. So I like the fact that we have now two different types of antagonists. Um, is that a word? Maybe. And um, both feel fresh and reviving. Now this episode may have built up this purple head or purple outfitted antagonist really well, but it also does show off Shokuho's character superbly, giving us details about her plan and building her up as a character to be this real pain in Makoto's neck and a great antagonist all around. Because obviously, again, she's being a more of a tactical, more smart and covering her tracks, which I think is very valuable and unique. So, awesome. So this episode does hint at maybe Kongo, Wanai and Wakatsuki's roles ending within the series. But having them find out that this cat and what it saw, I thought did that really well. Because they created another segment to this episode that really showed off just enough information to keep us as viewers hooked um, in the Shogaho storyline, despite introducing us to another antagonist uh, who I've already talked about in this video. And honestly, I do hope we do see more of these three characters, that being Kongo, Wakatsuki and Wanai, because I really do like their characters. However, if this is all they do in the series uh, thus far, then I think they've had a good run because they have had a brilliant showcasing so far and I've enjoyed every minute of it. The phrase, the eyes are more trustworthy than the ears, was fabulous. That line, I loved it. The connection to the rumour site as well was fantastic. Obviously, we had that site that Sasson was looking into um, Shadow Metal for episode 1 and 2. Um, and obviously, that kind of linked back to it. And I really like it when they link back to different things in different episodes. Because it's great for Shadowman and it's a good writing technique. Plus, it's a cool and unique way of getting Sasson an important role. Making her shine in a way that we wouldn't normally see. So I do like that because Sasson, for me, is a great character. In fact, I like most of the Railgun cast, but, you know, gotta give a bit of love to, to Sartan's character because she is too wholesome. Now, one thing that did kind of catch my attention, though, was with that line, the eyes are more trustworthy than he is. In the opening, we see this weird kind of doctor with what looks like a shiny version of the Rinnegan from Naruto. Obviously, he's got, like, his eyes open up and then it's, like, black with, like, white circles. And that's instantly what I thought when I heard that line. So maybe this character is involved because we do see Shogaho's kind of silhouette going into his eyes as well. So maybe that could be something that's kind of expanded upon later on. Overall, this episode for me was fantastic. Especially the build-up, I really did enjoy that. And the animation was wonderfully good throughout. Wow, that was terrible. Overall, this episode was fantastic. The build-up was brilliant and the animation was fantastic throughout. There were a few shots that were kind of janky in places, 
But at the same time, the backgrounds were really beautiful and had a very nice aesthetic look to it. And the characters had some fantastic expressions. And more often than not, the uh, animation on display was superb. I'm really excited to see how the story plays out moving forward now that the group is back kind of working with Makoto Misaka. And I'm not sure they'll be together for too long however, because although they are slowly but surely warming up to Makoto, I think it's going to be better if they work separately. Because that way they can fool uh, Shokuho into thinking that her plan is still working accordingly. But at the same time, Misaka has got a different idea. And I think that'd be good. Now, there was talks of uh, every visitor within Academy City having a GPS tracking device. And although that played a part in this episode in uh, the purple antagonist kind of finding Makoto's mother and uh, Uiharu, I think it's going to play another role in the future episodes. So hopefully that again gets expanded on a little bit more. But with all that being said, I want to know what your thoughts are down in the comment section below. Let me know all your thoughts and opinions as we move forward into the next episode. Like the video if you like the video and subscribe if you're new so you never miss a video from me. Plus I do more index content related kind of so accelerator, index, railgun as this is one and more on this channel on a weekly basis. So make sure you sign up and uh, you know keep your eye out for that because some of them are pretty interesting and go check out some of the content that I've already done before that might pique your interest as well. But apart from that, I hope you have an amazing day. Ali Kato, Matt Dennett, goodbye.